and assist it because there are elements of sophistication which raise that prospect. Stay with us for a second, Tony, because Vince Canestraro, who also talks on the subject of uh, terrorism and does more than talk on the subject of terrorism for us, is also here at the moment. Vince, do you want to make some comments about this? Mm. Yeah, Peter, I think that uh, Tony makes some good points about the complexity and the, and the sophistication of the operation. But I think also uh, we have to see what kind of organizations in the past have been willing to do uh, such a coordinated attack. Why, and, why, uh, is that, why is that a clue? Because it's a, it's a pattern. We see people who committed suicide in these operations. So that po points us away from a secular organization to a religiously oriented group. Uh, we've seen a, a pattern uh, of planning against five U.S. airliners in uh, 1993 with Ramzi Youssef when his safe site was uh, uh, inspected in Manila in 93, uh, the FBI found evidence that he had been planning to hijack and blow up in flight five United airliners uh, flying out of the Far East. Now that was a very ambitious operation and I don't think anyone mm -hmm. believed that he could actually uh, have done it. But here we are some, some eight years later uh, and we see a coordinated operation and three planes hijacked and uh, blown up uh, against targets in obviously suicide operations, bringing a lot of other people with them. Uh, so it, that tends, us, it tends to point us towards a religiously organized uh, group, uh, perhaps towards Al-Qaeda, but again with some state support. We've seen these groups evolve in their professionalism over the last several years. Uh, we go from... Uh, can I, a, Vince, can I just sure. interrupt you for one sure. second, just to try to keep you on the straight and narrow here? <laughs> it may be a reach to blame. It may be a reach to blame a religious organization. I, yeah. I, I agree that uh, we've come to accept the notion that uh, some members, uh, some people who, who worship Islam, uh, in the Middle East have found a better life giving themselves up as I say, but aren't you sort of already directing and creating something of a mindset about an investigation that's more complicated than that? Oh, oh certainly, and uh, there's no question that uh, this group, whatever it was, had some professional support, perhaps from this, a military and a state. Uh, the explosives, the, uh, the way you would uh, fly an aircraft, uh, but it does point towards a group that has members who are willing to kill themselves uh, in carrying out a punishing act against the United States. And there are only a few groups like that that we know of. Secular, radical Palestinian groups traditionally don't do this kind of thing. Right. Uh, we haven't seen that. The ones that we've seen that carried out suicide bombings tend to be Hamas, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, Al-Qaeda, and of course Hezbollah. And uh, so you've got basically a handful of potential suspects. Uh, none of this proves anything, of course, but it does tend to focus mm. an investigation. Let me ask you both, you, Vince, and then Tony Cordesman, second. Uh, just on the basis of history and on the basis of your own individual expertise, what do you think the chances are of the United States finding out who did this? First of all, you, Vince. I think that there's a fairly good chance of finding out who did this because the people who did this are going to brag, uh, they're going to talk, they're going to try and claim credit in a way that doesn't bring attention directly to them. But they will talk to other people and some of our intelligence resources will pick this up and that will, uh, that will lead us in a certain direction. And then they will go back uh, to the database of threat warnings that they've had uh, in the recent past. The U.S. has had a worldwide terrorism alert for some time that was just renewed yesterday, but again, the focus of those threats was abroad, U.S. installations abroad. They'll go back and see whether or not some of their intelligence operations that were picking up these threats may have been the recipient of deception. Uh, in other words, the group that may have done this may have been broadcasting deceptive information that we thought was legitimate threat mm -hmm. information against the foreign installation while they were really planning to do this kind of an operation. Thanks very much, Vince Canestrano. I'll go to Tony sure. Cordesman right away, but I just want to remind people, if you watch the news yesterday, you noticed that, you recall that we reported that a man named Ahmed Massoud, who was the last independent militia leader, not member of the Taliban in Afghanistan, uh, was, we believe, killed. There's still some debate about whether he's dead or not, but certainly was attacked 
uh, by his enemies, one of, them, one of them disguised as a television cameraman. And the United States was very open to admit that what, you lo what the United States lost when, uh, when Massoud was killed yesterday was access into Afghanistan for U.S. intelligence operatives. And so I turn now to Tony Cordesman for a quick comment on how quickly, how easily, how complicated, how difficult, how impossible might it be to find out who, who did this. Peter, let's consider several realities. We never found and punished the people who blew up the Marine Corps barracks. In Beirut. That's right. right. We have never really addressed who led the attack on al Kober, and the people who've been punished were at the lowest possible level. Those are the civilian and military barracks in Saudi Arabia. That's right. And when we go back to Libya and what happened to Pan Am 103, one person has been imprisoned we have never gone beyond attacking low-level people in an incident of this magnitude to attack the leaders and the core of the group with success, but we have never before really encountered things so serious that we are on the edge of war. And, the, and in, in the case of Pan Am 103, the United States alternated between blaming Syria for supporting the operation and or Libya which supported the operation so you're really reaffirming how complicated this is more than that Peter I think the key element is that if any state is involved in this in any way if it knew this was going to happen or it shelters a movement once we identify it we find ourselves with mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. about war and peace which we have never before encountered in terrorism well you certainly put your finger on, on, on one more part. I'd like you to hold that, Tony, for a second, because nothing could be more, in some respects, potentially dangerous at the moment. But let's not lose focus for today. Um, we'll come back to Tony Cordesman and talk about American reaction to the rest of this world. But in the meantime, we have a disaster here in New York City, uh, which is a national disaster. And we have a disaster in Washington because there's been an attack on the nation's military establishment. And we have at least one major plane crash in Pennsylvania today, which we believe is related, but in its own way is a national disaster as the crash of a major airliner often is. And I want to go to, before we get carried away by theory on terrorism, no offense to my colleagues, let's go back to lower Manhattan where Bob Jamison is with George Stephanopoulos. And Bob has been visiting hospitals in the last little while, and so I think the two of you together can bring us up to date on the scene. George, if I might, I'll start first, because I've just returned from St. Vincent's Hospital, which, Peter, is a little more than a mile from the World Trade Center and is a principal destination today for those who were injured in this disaster. And as one measure of how large it is, by midday, there were about 200 people, 18 of them critically injured, who were brought to St. Vincent's, which is about 20 more then were injured, uh, then were brought to St. Vincent's after the World Trade Center bombing in 1993. The injuries that the doctors are reporting are not principally uh, respiratory injuries, which was the case in 1993, but these are largely crushing injuries. And Peter, five hours after the first plane went into the World Trade Center, ambulances are still arriving regularly at St. Vincent's. They are conducting triage, you know, classifying the degree of injury outside on the sidewalk in front of St. Vincent's and they don't have a clear idea of how many more injured may go there as well as the other hospitals in New York and now we hear some in New Jersey. And Peter that's in part because we've just got a report from John McKenzie out in the field who talked to William Hall the head of the uh, Port Authority who said that formal search and rescue operations haven't even begun yet. The bulk of the, the effort right now by the police and the fire department and others is simply to establish the integrity, the safety of the World Trade Center building. Second, what was what's left on the site of the World Trade Center. Secondly, Peter, they reported that there's a staggering number of firefighters still on the site, up to 200 that they can't account for yet. They were able to talk to one firefighter on the scene, though, who said that their biggest problem now is not having fire hydrants to put out these small pockets of fires that are, that are cropping up all across the site. And secondly, Peter, there's a problem now with broken gas lines, which they fear could ignite further explosions. Uh, George, can Peter, I just... if I might add... Yeah, go ahead, Bob. I, I just add one thing. Uh, 
I was struck by something at St. Vincent's. The Red Cross, as you may know, has put out a plea for blood donors, mm -hmm. particularly those with uh, the less common types of blood, such as O. But even before that plea went out, thousands of people spontaneously showed up at, at St. Vincent's. Thousands of people, and many of them told us, this is what we think we can do to help. We can't do anything else. Sitting at home watching on television won't help at this point. Well, Bob, you're quite right. And in fact, there's you, no reason you would have heard us, but we mentioned a short while ago that blood donors in Nebraska, uh, one of their first instincts, were people in Nebraska, one of their first instincts was to go and respond to a request for blood donations because, as you've just pointed out and we've said before, there's a critical shortage of blood in the United States. And we've heard from the Red Cross any number of times in the last year or so that that the country needs blood and it's not going to be available and so it is it is reassuring to hear in new york city people doing that instinctively bob let me ask you both and start with you and then george my sense of the recovery uh if that's the word for it of this phase of what's going on down there is to deal with people who are injured who are clearly not in or under the world trade towers am i right Yes, I think that's correct, and a large number of them, in one way or another, uh, are some of the emergency and rescue people. And then the next step, as we have seen in other disasters, will be to see who else there is. And, and George, we've all, you know, we've been, we've seen buildings collapsed. It sometimes takes days to discover um, people under collapsed buildings, and we now have a circumstance. Do we have any idea how many people got out before the building collapsed? We don't, do we? Not, not a very good idea, Peter. We do know that there was some warning. As I said earlier, we spoke to some of the security guards who were on the site, and they did have some warning. There was a feeling that the second building was going to collapse, so the evacuation did begin from people as high up as in the 82nd and 86th floors. But we don't know how many were able to get out. And we do know, Peter, from at least one of the security guards, that they, they were nowhere near complete. They, had nowhere, they hadn't come even close to completing the evacuation. But and, we don't have numbers. And, Peter, the... Adding to a little bit to the confusion, uh, the collapse of the North Tower mm. may have affected other buildings around sure. there as well as uh, the collapse of the Millennium Hotel. Well, thank you both very much, and, and both of you come back at any time that you, uh, that you want, to want and can or contribute to this. We can tell you that the military, thank you both very much, Bob Jamison and George Stephanopoulos. Thank you. Um, we can tell you that the military... Uh, the governor said earlier, the governor of New York, that the National Guard was going to come in, and there's National Guard on station in some parts of the city anyway, is, is setting up a temporary morgue on the piers in New York City near West 57th Street, uh, which is where people often take off to go and have a tour of New York City uh, from the air, um, and uh, close by where the famous Circle Line leaves, so people can take a tour around the island of Manhattan and see what it looks like. And none of that traffic is permitted today. The only traffic we have seen on the Hudson River has been, as has been pointed out to us several times, John Miller particularly, pointing out that ferries are taking wounded across the river, across the Hudson River to New Jersey. ABC Cynthia McFadden is on the phone at the moment. She is from uh, calling us from Bellevue Hospital, which is over on the east side of Manhattan, quite some distance from this. Sylvia, do you hear me? Cynthia, do you hear me? I do, Peter. Can you tell uh, us what's going on there? Yeah, we've been able to get into the Disaster Command Center, which is located here at Bellevue. As you say, it's about 20 or 30 blocks north and east of the actual site of the Twin Towers. But this is where the city puts its resources for, to prepare for an emergency. They rehearse here, practice here for disasters, and today, uh, we were allowed uh, in the first uh, first group of journalists to go inside and see where they were running the disaster relief from. Let me paint a picture for you, if, if I might, of the room. It's about a 30 by 15 room, about 10 people crowded around a conference table, uh, about 15 phone lines coming into the room. Uh, the mayor's office, emergency services, police and fire, all of those efforts being coordinated through this room. Uh, it was surprisingly calm, surprisingly quiet. Uh, it is located in the heart of the emergency room here at Bellevue Hospital, Peter, and the emergency room itself is busy. They've had about 140 to 150 people come through Bellevue so far. Um, we've also had the opportunity to talk to the director of the hospital here and to the man who heads up the emergency room. I can tell you a little bit about the injuries if, you're, if, if you'd like. Please do. Um, 
because this is a, fur a hospital further away, they're getting the less seriously injured, although, having said that, of the 140 or 50 people, 40 of them are classified in serious condition. Two were dead on arrival. They have one baby who is being treated. Three to five operating rooms are currently um, uh, going uh, with uh, what the doctor characterized as extremely serious surgeries. Um, the doctor running the operation here said that they have sent a team of physicians closer to the site and they're going to be setting up tent hospitals closer to the site to help some of the uh, enormous uh, flow of injuries. Nobody made it here to this hospital until about two hours after the blast. And uh, they believe, I've, I've been listening to the coverage, they, they believe that it's not going to be for another many more hours until they feel the full brunt of this over here. Okay. Thank you, Cynthia, very much. Come back to us, please. <clears throat> Uh, when you uh, when you when you get even better handle of this, uh, we've talked a little bit about the blood shortage, which, as I said, is a national issue. But in New York City, there is uh, there are supplies of blood so far. People did respond very quickly and lined up ready to give blood at some of the blood centers here. There is a supply of O type blood. Um, o negative appears, as best we can understand from the people who are collecting it, is the most important kind of blood needed at the moment because it's the universal donor meaning anyone can actually get it. Now, there's a slight bit more of information, uh, like all information today, reasonably suspect at the outset, but uh, the Associated Press is reporting that this airliner, this United, Air United Airlines uh, jet, which crashed in Pennsylvania, which is a um, American Airlines, my apologies, United Airlines Flight 93. I don't quite know exactly what aircraft it was, a 767, I think. Um, which we just uncertain about, did not know why it, it had crashed, whether it was part of this overall operation this morning. The AP is now quoting a man um, who minutes earlier, saying he was a passenger on the plane, told an emergency dispatcher in a cell phone call that we are being hijacked, we are being hijacked. Treat that as you do all information we give you today as being uh, preliminary at best, sometimes wrong. I think we've been pretty good about it today and, and certainly confused because listening to the mayor, listening to uh, the governor of the state, both of whom we talked to, listening to the senator in charge of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, listening to all of our analysts, listening to everybody, uh, the country is still very much in the middle of, if not immediate post event chaos, certainly in terms of trauma and trying to get a handle on what the hell's been going on here. And as we've said before, when you look at the television pictures of the Trade Center collapsed upon itself, these are buildings 110 stories high and where thousands and thousands and thousands of people work. And I know on occasion we can run the images of it to the point of offensiveness. I hope we're not there, but this is what it looked like when one of the trade towers just appeared to either peel away or collapse on itself, but from top to bottom, 110 stories to the bottom. First one, the southern tower, tower one or tower two, it doesn't matter what, just one tower and then the other, and then the other tower sometime later. But John Miller said the cops picked up very quickly, it was looking weak and bending or, or leaning in one particular direction, indicating that when those two aircraft, one hitting one tower, the other hitting an hour, another, had, 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 been in, had gone straight into those towers with such force that even at the midpoint of the building, or in that case two-thirds up, something had happened to so totally weaken the infrastructure that this was like peeling a banana, except that it was full of people, or had many, many people in it. I think we have Senator John McCain on the phone from Washington. Am I right, Senator? Yes, Peter. How are you? I'm well, sir. Thank you. I'm not well. None of us are well. You know yep. that. Yes. What's Thank on your you. mind? Well, um, I, I think that this uh, act, obviously, is one which would constitute an act of war. I believe that the American people could, should remain calm and rally behind our president. And I'm confident that our military and our president We'll find out the perpetrators of this outrage, and uh, we will not only punish those responsible, but ensure that uh, something like this never happens again. 
and clearly we need to look at our intelligence capabilities. I don't mean for one second, Senator, to, to belittle the necessary thing you must say today, which is we'll find those who are responsible and we'll punish them, because Tony Cordesman has just pointed out very effectively how often we don't find the people and we don't get to punish them. But you say it's an act of war. Yes. Um, do you believe that if another country is somehow the patron of a, 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 an individual or a group of individuals who has done this, we should go to war with that country? Absolutely, because they have uh, committed uh, atrocity on a scale that's unprecedented uh, in history that I know of. Uh, uh, everybody's talking about a second Pearl Harbor. At least that was an attack on military targets, uh, not on the civilian community. Um, this is an unspeakable outrage, and clearly uh, we can and must uh, find out who uh, perpetrated it. And I, mm. Tony Cordesman and I, I have great respect for him, but I believe that we have the capability to find it out, and we need to improve our intelligence capabilities, particularly in the area of human intelligence. We have wonderful satellite capabilities and technical capabilities in the late 70s and early 80s we mm. for all intents and purposes dismantled our human intelligence mm. capability which divines motives and that's something technical intelligence has cannot do well i think we those of us who cover intelligence in any way senator know that human intelligence or human as they call it in the trade has been very difficult yes. particularly in places like afghanistan so just assume for a second well, no, don't assume anything, but are you desperately yeah. frustrated at the moment in some respects because this was sort of, in, in many ways, this was bound to happen in some measure and we may not be able to get at the perpetrators? Um, no, I, I, I think that one of the, among many other things, uh, the, obviously sorrow is the overriding emotion, but uh, also I don't think our lives will ever be the same again in some respect, especially those who use airliners with some frequency. There's always been questions and studies and tests of our airport security systems and they've always found breaches in them obviously that's going to have to be addressed and that's going to be very inconvenient for americans but at the same time uh, we also have to reevaluate the importance of uh, of making sure that uh, that these anyone who wants to try it is incapable of doing so but the best way to address it obviously is going to the source you, you, your 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 democratic colleague senator biden said a while ago the terrorist wins again when it when it alters american lifestyle i assume you believe the same thing oh absolutely absolutely and uh... uh... the the, the things that have been inflicted on the american people uh, is you know i mean it, it it staggers the imagination and yet i believe that the best thing that we can do as americans is remain calm rally behind the president of the united states and know with with confidence that we will take whatever steps are necessary to prevent this from happening again. I don't think that there's any reason for Americans to feel a sense of panic. Okay, thank you, Senator McCain, very much Thanks. indeed. Thanks. Appreciate Thanks. your time. Senator John McCain of Arizona, who uh, knows a lot about violence, and uh, many people in the country will think knows a lot about leadership uh, as well, former presidential candidate, often talking about doing it, or often considered to be doing it again. Claire Shipman is in Washington. Claire, um, where's Mr. Bush? Well, Peter, we have a little bit of news on that front. As you know, he is in the air again on his way somewhere from Shreveport, Louisiana. We have been told by sources that he will not be coming to Washington. He is going to make another stop at an undisclosed secure location so that he can talk to people from there on the ground. His security team can assess just how safe it is back here in Washington. As you mentioned earlier, that there must be great political pressure for him to get back to Washington. These sources confirm just that. The political team wants him back home. He wants to come back home. His security team does not feel it is safe right now. They do think, though, and they're guessing right now, that he might be able to get back at some point this evening. But again, he's got at least one more stop. Another interesting point along one, those lines. Uh, hold on, hold on. One, one more stop. One more stop between Shreveport and Washington. He's on his way now, we're told, to, to another undisclosed location that his security team considers secure. They won't tell us where it is, obviously. But do we know? So, in other words, this one more stop is another security stop dictated by the Secret Service? Indeed it is. And we would be guessing if we talked about another Air Force base or something of the kind, but they have a number of stops. And I'm told this one is not anywhere in the direction of Washington, that they have a number of places they can take him. Let me ask you this. Have you heard any mention whatsoever of the possibility of the president to come to New York? 
No, there was a rumor to that effect earlier, Peter, but that was shot down, and, and my sources tell me he is not going anywhere near New York right now. That situation would create chaos that New York just doesn't need at that point. At this point, absolutely. Um, they've also told us that their full security plan is in effect. They do have the House and Senate leadership out of town. Condoleezza Rice is the only senior official remaining at the White House, and she will remain at the White House to try to coordinate efforts from there. Mrs. Bush has also been spirited away. She was on Capitol Hill this morning, set to address Congress. She's been taken to an undisclosed location. Peter. Now, uh, there was some mention that the, and again, but there was some mention of the fact that the, the United Airlines aircraft that crashed east to southeast of Pittsburgh may have been, in fact, going in the direction of Camp David. Had you heard that? I heard that, as you did. Um, my security sources don't know anything about that, okay. so we haven't been able to confirm anything along okay. those okay. lines. Okay, then we'll leave it alone. Claire, thanks very much. We'll come back to you. Some of you know where the president uh, is going to go next. It seems a little bit strange. Uh, Pierre Thomas, work on the phones on the FBI. What have you got here? Well, one of the first things that they are focused on, obviously, is the injured, but the next priority is to get to Dulles International Airport, which they are, and Boston Logan. They are going to talk to the Boston uh, United and American airline officials. They're trying to get a sense of who was on the plane. Early on, they're very limited in what they can do. They're trying to assess the situation, but one of the first things they can try to do is try to get a sense of who was on the plane, try to begin to check out aliases, and that might lead them in some investigative direction. But they're very limited in the early stages in terms of what they can do. Hello, I'm Del Walters in the ABC7 studios. We're going to rejoin ABC in just a second, but we wanted to bring you up to date on the second prong and what has been now a two-pronged terrorist attack here, and that being the plane that crashed into the Pentagon. You were looking live at a picture there where at this hour the flames still continue to burn. Joining Dell, I'm Kathleen Matthews, and we want to take you back several hours to about 10 o'clock this morning when a plane crashed into the Pentagon. And as you can see, damage and destruction there caused by that plane. While we are not getting confirmation from American Airlines as to what plane that was, apparently FBI sources have been telling ABC News that the plane that crashed into the Pentagon was American Airlines Flight 77. That was a Boeing 757 that actually took off from Dulles Airport and was en route to Los Angeles. Now we understand that plane, the airlines are confirming that that plane was carrying 58 passengers, four flight attendants, and two pilots. Now again, the airlines will not confirm where, where that airplane has crashed, but FBI sources have told ABC News that that American Airlines fly, flight is the one that crashed into the Pentagon. We're going to update you on the injuries in a second, but first, we want to bring you up to date on a phone number that we've been given by the Pentagon. If you are a Pentagon employee who evacuated the building, they want to hear from you. They're trying to get an accounting as to who may or may not be inside the building. The number that you can call is there on your screen. It is 1-877-663-6772. Again, that is the number for Pentagon employees, Pentagon personnel who may have evacuated the building this morning so that they can get an idea as just to how many people inside the Pentagon at this hour they still are searching for. It's been four and a half hours since that plane crashed into the Pentagon and the uh, injury list is climbing. Here's the very latest. Virginia Hospital Center is reporting that they have received 30 injured people. Washington Hospital Center is reporting they have received five critical uh, uh, pa uh, patients. A lot of these are burn victims. And George Washington Hospital is confirming that they have two from the Pentagon attack who are in their emergency room. Now we understand that there are at least 75 people who've been injured who are still on the ground at the Pentagon and because they cannot bring aircraft into that area to medevac them out they're unable to fly them to local hospitals and so they're setting up a triage unit there at the Pentagon to be able to treat those, pass those patients. And now on to the situation in the district. A little more than an hour ago at about 1.30 Eastern Time, D.C. Mayor Anthony Williams declared a state of emergency in the district. He said that if you don't have business in the city, please don't come. Emergency personnel are overwhelmed. Here's a little bit of what he said. We're, we're uh, declaring a state of emergency in order to put everyone on alert, in order to uh, ensure that we have the highest level of preparedness. Obviously, if something were to happen, God forbid, and we pray, pray that it won't, uh, we will be fully prepared uh, to then execute uh, the necessary contingency plans. And to that extent, the mayor also promised that there will be live news conferences that will take place at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and 5 o'clock. 
we will let you know the details of those news conferences. Well, emergency personnel have been dispatched to try to take control of the traffic situation, which has been mayhem in downtown Washington. As a result, a lot of buildings closing. And this is the latest situation out in Virginia. Route 50, 66, 29, and GW Parkway are now closed inbound. So any of those inbound routes are now closed. Uh, medical personnel only allowed on those routes on the inbound roads. Uh, medical personnel only allowed also on Canal Road, which is now one way outbound. Rock Creek Parkway, all lanes northbound. In other words, they've reverted to a uh, rush hour situation where all of the, uh, the roads are now outbound to take people out of the city to try to uh, bring control to that, uh, that chaos. Downtown. Again, we are four and a half hours into what has been a two pronged terrorist attack, one taking place in New York, the other here in Washington. ABC is working with us. We are working with them to try and get you as much information as we possibly can. We're going to go back now to ABC's live coverage of the events that are unfolding. For the national tragedy that has occurred today, all Major League Baseball games for today have been canceled. The PGA Tour has canceled uh, the beginning of tournaments on Thursday. And whether they will be further delayed is uncertain. Major League Soccer postponed all of the games it had scheduled for tomorrow night. And the National Football League says it is mulling over whether to postpone this weekend's schedule. Obviously, the effects of this are going to reverberate for many days, many weeks, many months. Yep. And um, so there are those kinds of cancellations uh, being discussed. Okay, thanks, uh, Charlie. Go I, ahead. I, I, thanks. I just, as we can't, want to go to uh, try to bring it back together for people who, a lot of people have been not with us all day. The thousands and millions of people may have been glued to their televisions, impossible not to. But ABC's John Donvan has been following the events of the last few hours, and he has managed to put together, I suppose we could call it a chronology or a timeline, if you will. But here is some sense of what happened from the beginning. We want to tell you what we know as we know it. Well, we just got a report in that there's been some sort of explosion at the first the thing World any Trade television Center camera saw this morning was City. this just before nine o'clock, roughly 15 minutes earlier, an American Airlines jet hijacked from Boston had crashed into the south tower of the World Trade Center. There were 92 people on board. It does not appear that there's any kind of a, an effort up there yet. Now remember, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. That looks like a second plane. As just I did not see a plane go in. That, that Minutes later, the second plane, the second tower. The fireball ate up the aircraft. It was a United Airlines flight, a 767 from Boston to Los Angeles. There had been 65 people on board. I was happened to look on the first tower, and I actually saw people waving where the first plane crashed through, and then it was unbelievable seeing this second jet come crashing into the second tower. What is going on? New York City was staggered. As soon as he got hit, I was thrown to a window. So I was very lucky. We're going to interrupt this. We'll come back to this, I promise you, to go to a news conference being held by the mayor of New York, Rudolph Giuliani. And then, uh, Governor, thank you very, thank you, very much for your assistance and your help and your support. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, for your leadership through this crisis. This is uh, a vicious attack upon New York. It's an attack upon America. It's an attack upon the whole concept of freedom and our way of life. Uh, and we cannot let these at attacks succeed. Uh, first step has to be to make sure we do everything in our power to protect the people and to save the lives of those who, whose lives are still at risk and to help those who have been injured. And I want to commend the mayor and I want to thank my colleagues from Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania and the federal government have all offered and made ready uh, support to help us uh, deal with this ongoing crisis. Uh, the people of New York are uh, not only the, the freest and most diverse people in the world, we're also, I believe, the most capable of rising to meet the challenges of this type of attack and right now we want New Yorkers to uh, remain calm to go about their business to appreciate the fact that everything to provide for their safety is being done to appreciate that everything that can be done to provide for the health and the needs of the people who are still at risk is being done and that we will continue to work to make sure that we get through this uh, as strongly and quickly as possible. I want to thank the uh, federal administration. Secretary Thompson has been on the phone with me a number of times, as well as the president, uh, for what they are offering and prepared to do. Uh, and we're just uh, confident that, uh, uh, well, this is a horrible attack. 
and one that uh, is despicable and uh, really unthinkable in its magnitude. We will get through this, uh, and we will continue to have a great and free country, state, and society. Do we know the number of casualties at this point, sir? I don't, I don't think we, we really want to speculate about that. The number of casualties will be more than any, any of us can bear, ultimately. And I don't think we want to speculate on the number of casualties. The effort now has to be to save as many people as possible. And I don't, think, I don't think we will know the answer to that until sometime tomorrow or the next Were there day. large numbers of firefighters? There are a large number of firefighters and police officers who are uh, in harm's way. And we don't know how, ma how many we've lost. But there's no doubt we've lost. <coughs> We've lost some firefighters and police officers. Do you know anything about the cause of the explosions that brought the two buildings down yet? Was it caused by the planes or by something else? We, be we, there was we believe we believe that it was caused by the after effects of the of the planes hitting the, the, the buildings. We don't we don't know of an additional explosion after that. Could you tell us do you expect any further attacks on New York? Is there anything to indicate that there could be more bombs, more planes out there? I know originally there was a report that eight planes have been hijacked, four have only been accounted for. What about the remaining four, and is there any possibility that there could be bombs on the ground planted by some... We have no specific in information to that effect. Obviously, the city is now closed, the airspace around the city is closed, uh, and we are on heightened alert. But we have no specific information suggesting any further attack. Can you tell us where the planes came from? The coming into the port of New York? I think to give the people of New York confidence, to show that the federal government is standing with us, and and to uh, just to make certain that nothing further happens. This has been a very, very difficult and traumatic day for the people of the United States and the people of the city. And I think that it's, a, it's an act that shows that the federal government is going to do everything they can to support us and help us. Can you give us an idea of the extent of the, um, the rescue effort that's going on right now in Lower Manhattan? What is the scope of this, thing, uh, this operation? There, there are over 1,000 rescue workers, probably about 2,000 that are deployed, trying to get into the buildings, trying to find people, trying to search for people. The governor and I spoke a couple of hours ago. And the governor has deployed the National Guard to relieve them because our, our people are going to need reinforcements pretty pretty soon but right now they don't want to leave because they're searching they're searching for innocent citizens and they're searching for some of their some of their brothers and sisters are you finding survivors yes they we have um, we have some numbers that we can give you we have 1500 people at Liberty State Park who were evacuated described as walking wounded they were evacuated by ferry and other means there are about 600 as of about 15 minutes ago in local hospitals that we account for, 600 people that are being treated in local hospitals. And there are 150 uh, in particular that were critical that were moved by EMS. New York City has 170 hospitals. So we have a lot of hospitals and we're utilizing all of them. Probably the one that was the hardest hit was St. Vincent's Hospital. And I would like to just single them out and commend them because as I was rushing down there after the first plane hit, and before the second, they were already deploying people on the street. I could see the doctors and nurses outside getting ready to receive people. And that was before the second plane actually hit the World Trade Center. What was, what was your experience there? What was your experience down there? I, I also, blood donations. We have several sites for blood donations. 153 East 53rd Street, 66th in Amsterdam, which is the Red Cross, and 310 East 67th Street. Uh, we, if people want to do something and they can donate blood that that's going to help not just today but tomorrow and the next day this uh this relief effort is going to take uh, some time mr mayor you experience? were one of the first people down there can you describe the scene in your own words what you saw down there i don't know that i'm really able to describe it it was the most horrific scene i've ever seen in my whole life uh we saw the the uh, world trade center uh, in flames a big gaping hole all the way on the top of it we could see people jumping from the top of the building. Um, and then uh, we, we went into uh, Barclay Street, 75 Barclay Street, I think it was. And we were there when the building collapsed. And it collapsed in part on 75 Barclay Street. So we were trapped in the building for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, trying to get out different exits. And we finally went through a basement 
and came out 100 Park, Park Place. Did you ever fear for your own safety, sir? Sure, yeah. What went through your mind? I don't think anything went through my mind other than uh, uh, making sure that we all remained calm and found an exit and just tried to figure out the most intelligent thing to do. Probably the same thing that went through the minds of uh, 10,000 other New Yorkers who uh, I could see on the streets and I really have to commend them. If you really want to know what New Yorkers were all about, you just watch the way in which they handled themselves. They didn't panic. They moved deliberately. They moved swiftly. But they didn't hurt each other. They helped each other. I mean, these are just the most wonderful people in the world. Do we know anything about the composition of that dust that flight this moment had? Is there any asbestos or any hazardous material in that dust? I, I don't know. I don't know the answer. Mr. Mayor, I don't know if there was a gas explosion related to this. Is that something you were aware about? There was a gas leak or possible... We don't believe that. We don't. We don't. We don't. We don't believe that's the case. Mr. Mayor, can you tell us anything about the, where the planes come from, I, I, where the, the aircraft came from? Bill Diamond reminds me that we've turned off the gas in the city in the city buildings, just to be certain. Can you tell us a precaution. About where these aircraft came from? There was a report that may have been hijacked in uh, Boston. I don't. I don't. I, I. I think we should leave. I think we should leave that up to the federal government to. To re yes, we do have some information, but I think we should leave that up to the federal government to release that in, that information. I'll focus is on the relief efforts. And Governor, do you think there should be a part of the United States for what happened here in this country, both in New York, Washington, and other places? The first step right now, Marsha, is to make sure we do everything to help those people who need our uh, support, and they're, whether they're injured or uh, still uh, trapped in buildings. Uh, the second thing is to make sure at the same time we're providing the maximum security against possible additional incidents. Uh, but clearly, this is an attack upon America, it's an attack upon our freedom and our way of life, and we must retaliate and go after those who perpetuated this heinous crime against the people of America. Mayor, this is Cheryl, compared to Pearl Harbor. Cheryl, 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 This has been compared to... I'll do both. I'll do this both. has been compared to Pearl Harbor. Do you consider this, this to be is a, this, is, this is a vicious, unprovoked, uh, horrible attack on innocent uh, men, women, and children. It's one of the most heinous acts certainly in, in, in world history. And um, as the governor said, and, uh, and I said to the president, we fully and completely support him in any action that he has to take.